Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz and here is your weather forecast update for March 5th, 2024. In today's weather forecast, we're going to be tracking the monsoon and the Coral Sea cyclone development that we've been looking at for the past couple of days across far northern Queensland. Then we're going to jump over to West Australian waters and take a look at a cyclone that could develop there in around four or five days time. And then we're going to jump down into the southern parts of the nation where we're looking at some pretty strong thunderstorms expected to materialise across the goldfields in the south interior of Western Australia. Australia. Starting things off with the Queensland situation though, you can see over the coming couple of days, especially from Thursday to Sunday onwards, a lot of rainfall is expected to materialise across the monsoon trough in the Gulf of Carpentaria and in the Arafura Sea, and that has a good chance of spitting out into a tropical cyclone by around next Sunday and maybe even into Monday as well. If this does become a tropical cyclone, it will remain weak across the northern uh, parts of the Coral Sea, um, but there is still that chance that it does spit itself out from a tropical low and we do get a cyclone up there. Now tracking the system on the forecast, we're going to start things off with the rainfall outlook first because that is the immediate threat starting from around Thursday. In fact, actually, Tully has had 250 millimetres overnight, so the rainfall threat is from now onwards, and I have been saying over the last couple of days, it's going to be that moderate to heavy rainfall that we see. It's just going to be more isolated until about Thursday when it's expected to become more consistent, and it definitely does look like that's the case. From Thursday onwards, we're seeing an increased amount of rain and shower activity throughout the Coral Sea, especially in the evening hours around Thursday as we start to see what looks like a tropical low start to develop in the Arafura Sea and that's matched with the wind speeds with winds from the east on the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria side and then from the west on the Arafura Sea side which means there is a very weak low pressure system starting to develop around Cape Wessel and Nullanby and that's reciprocated on also the Access G3 model which is the one that's being most aggressive with this tropical cyclone forecast but the eastern wave and the Access G3 are in a very uh, similar state right now in terms of forecasts. So we'll use the XSG3 right now, considering it's a high resolution, longer term model. Still though, a convective model, it can get things wrong on more times than one. But the Access G3 calling for this to uh, drive a lot of rainfall out from the southeast in the Coral Sea as the low pressure system starts to develop in the Gulf of Carpentaria. And that's going to enhance rainfall uh, every single day for locations between Townsville and up towards Thursday Island, where we'll be seeing widespread daily rainfall totals above 150 millimetres for around four days straight. And then there'll be isolated daily rainfall totals about 300 millimetres, especially in the mountainous areas around Innisfail, Tully and the Daintree Rainforest. Now the rainfall picks itself up uh, on Friday evening and into Saturday morning which does look like the wettest time in the next five days for this area around Cairns. Cairns itself probably are going to see about 200 millimetres over the coming five days out of this event um, but then this tropical low starts to develop Saturday night into Sunday morning and the rainfall becomes more concentrated around the centre of the low pressure system and the rainfall subsequently uh, moves a little bit further north, north of around Cooktown, and it starts to drench the far northern reaches of the Cape York Peninsula, where you're talking really remote locations up here. So just to recap, over the next five days, um, for areas between Cardwell up towards Cooktown, expect, especially along the coastline, up to 400 millimetres. Port Douglas itself, probably going to be one of the wetter locations, with around 300 millimetres, but there will be places around Innisfail and Tully that get three to 400 millimetres, and they will, of course, be isolated areas that here that get up up to 600 millimetres. Tully overnight, as I said, has had 250 millimetres. Um, I believe at the uh, re uh, River Alert just outside of the town centre from a deluge that set itself over the town at around 2 a.m. And that's just what we're going to be seeing. We're going to be seeing these deluges set themselves up just offshore. And as they move ashore, they'll dump 100 millimetres in six hours and cause flash flooding or river in front flooding. So certainly a dangerous time uh, for... Uh, rivers they are likely to flood as a result of this situation once again it's nothing crazy up here this rainfall stuff happens every single year for this location uh, in tropical northern Queensland but it is a dangerous amount of rainfall that's expected to come ashore so nothing that they're not used to but still a lot of rainfall expected and that could cause some significant flooding or damage over the next 10 days as I said the rainfall does concentrate itself further north there's only an extra hundred millimeters in terms of icing on the cake really for areas between 
between Cardwell to Cooktown, but it's going to be further north than the far northern reaches of the Cape York Peninsula that cops the Del uh, deluge, and that's as this tropical low, which you can see here just towards the east of Thursday Island. That's as that one starts to develop. Now, the Axis G3 used to have this becoming a fully fledged tropical cyclone, but as I did expect, they don't have that anymore. They still have this becoming a tropical low, and they have shifted the forecast a couple of kilometers over towards the east. But as you can see on Tuesday, um, there's the difference between the Eastern Blue Earth and the Axis G3 model is actually quite negligible in terms of tropical low intensity and also tropical low location considering it's eight days out. So great model congruency here. Very happy to say that there will be a tropical low up in the northern parts of the Coral Sea. Or not happy to say, but I'm happy to make the forecast with a higher degree of um, confidence that it's going to um, round out into being accurate forecast. I do feel that we're going to get a tropical low up here um, in around the six to seven, maybe even the eight day sort of period. Not going to become a cyclone, as I said, it's just going to remain that sort of very broad, messy, tropical low sort of thing. If it does become a cyclone, it will happen later on next week, but something really quite strange, frankly, is starting to happen in the Coral Sea in terms of the forecast by around next Wednesday, and this is a rubbish forecast in the Access G3. I don't know what's going on here, and this would actually be quite impossible considering the amount of low pressure areas of this intensity that are located in the Coral Sea. They would get destroyed by the Fujiwara effect. And you can see a tropical cyclone starting to develop over Western Australia, which leads us very nicely into the next part of this video where we're going to be taking a look at a tropical cyclone expected to develop around the Kogos Killing Islands and potentially another system as well closer to Western Australia. Uh, this system could actually get quite strong. Tropical O08U expected to become a severe tropical cyclone at some point in its lifetime, but it isn't going to do that in the Australian region and it's still out there for the oceans to decide whether it will get named in the Australian region and pick up the next name on the naming list, which is Megan. And switching over to the forecast run, you can see uh, from the Axis G3 at least, expecting a very strong system to be um, developing by next Tuesday. But we're going to start things off with where they are right now. The system, the low pressure area located about 150 kilometres towards the northwest of West Island. And if we were to take a look at the satellite imagery, right now it's just a convective bubble bath, just blowing up a bunch of thunderstorms. And it's really quite a meaningless uh, bunch of clouds right now. But still, though, expected to get quite strong over the coming couple of days. It looks like by Friday, it's becoming a fully fledged tropical cyclone. Maybe that would take until about Saturday or Sunday at this stage, actually, um, considering the conditions are probably a little bit worse than what the forecast models have seen. Um, and yeah, the Eastern Blue really doesn't know, I guess, what to do with this system. It hardly calls for it to get to a tropical cyclone, actually. The Eastern Blue yesterday was calling for quite a strong system, but we will roll this back to Saturday and we'll use the GFS model. The GFS model is generally fairly good with long term cyclone predictions. It's quite rare that the GFS misses out completely. Completely on a forecast so it's a great model to be using especially in the Indian Ocean it's pretty accurate in the long range now uh, it takes its merry time to become a tropical cyclone I'm gonna say that that's maybe oh, maybe it's Saturday night that it becomes a tropical cyclone here but you can see it has to be towards the east of 90 degrees west and this system is at 86 degrees east and there is no way that that is a tropical cyclone in the Australian region and it will not be getting the next name on the Australian naming list of Megan um, and that will just increase West Australia's cyclone drought, but you can see up here another tropical low starts to develop south of Indonesia. This is a very messy and broad one, but it does wrap itself up into a tropical cyclone by next Monday and Tuesday as it heads for West Australia. Now, this makes a lot of sense in the forecast, and this leads into the third part of the video where we're going to be talking about some extreme rainfall totals across Western Australia. They're just not possible without tropical moisture, those rainfall totals. And now we're finally starting to see hints of this tropical moisture coming ashore for Western Australia, so that's actually giving me a um, very good reason to now trust the models with the amount of rainfall that parts of Western Australia are expecting over the next 10 days, which is quite a lot. And this will head down the Australian coastline or the West Australian coastline. It looks like another system spins itself up, but that just might be a forecast model trying to do something funky here by next Thursday. I don't think that that's going to happen, but you do see that they do swing around each other quite nicely, which is how they would interact with each other um, in the real world. I just don't think that you're going to see two tropical cyclones this close together. 
together. But yeah, it's certainly been a very weird and, to be quite frank, disappointing in terms of numbers uh, cyclone season for the West Australian region. I mean, people have been hoping for just a little bit of cyclone activity to deliver a little bit of rainfall across the Pilbara and the Kimberley coastline, but we haven't had that. I mean, Cyclone Lincoln is very hard to call that uh, rainfall relief. That really didn't dump much rainfall except over the Kimberley. But yeah, a very weak cyclone that brushes the coast to bring a little bit of rainfall for areas between Broome and Karratha would be very welcome, that's for sure. And yeah, just back to the forecast graphic, you can see we're expecting quite a lot of rainfall to fall over the orange area in Western Australia, which is about two thirds of the state actually, including the wheat belt, the gold fields, the south interior, and also parts of the Pilbara and the Gascoyne region. Once again, rolling that back to the current time on the forecast graphic, we're going to be using the Access G3 model here because it is a convective situation, and the Access G3 is a convective model. You can already see that low pressure system starting to set itself up in the Pilbara region of Western Australia, and that's just going to be driving evening pulse thunderstorm activity across a lot of Western Australia. And some of these pulse thunderstorms looked like they could get quite strong by the looks of things. Um, it's just going to be consistent thunderstorm activity, especially tonight, tomorrow, and in to Thursday. A lot of rainfall can be expected. We're talking over the next three days of at least 200 millimetres for some locations, especially in the interior and into the Pilbara region. It should miss the majority of the FIFO communities out here. It's going to get a couple of the uh, much further inland ones, such as Jigalong, maybe even parts of Telfer as well, or areas around Telfer could receive a significant amount of rainfall. But your main FIFO areas, uh, we've got Mines, Tom Price, Marble Bar, and then in, uh, further towards the coast around Karratha and Port Headland and Panawansia, they should miss out on the worst the rainfall here. This is a problematic amount of rainfall. It will flood roads and it will cut off these isolated communities for extended periods of time. It's just a very good thing that the amount of rainfall we're expecting across this portion of Western Australia is home to about 20,000 people. It's one of the most remote areas that you can get on this planet outside of Antarctica or Greenland. Over the next five days, it looks like the rainfall does slowly start to ease off, but it looks like it really does come back uh, next week. So definitely over the next three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and hopefully easing off by around Friday for Western Australia, the rainfall. But it looks like by next weekend, it really does come back, or this coming weekend, actually, by around Saturday and Sunday, the rainfall really does pick up again. And it looks like we're going to see this low-pressure trough start to extend closer to the coastline by next Monday and Tuesday. It's reciprocated amongst the Eastern Blue F model to happen like that and that will be associated with this tropical cyclone up over the Cocos Killing Islands or a developing cyclone here uh, closer to the West Australian coastline pulling all of this moisture quite uh, a lot further closer to the coast. Now this does create a little bit of an interesting forecast for Perth. I really can't be giving a number in terms of how much rainfall is expected. The Eastern we have liking about 50 to 80 millimetres of rain which would be great. That is welcome rainfall for Perth. The GFS model liking about 5 to 10 millimetres and the Access G3 model liking, I believe, around 25 to 50 millimetres. Oh, no, they want absolutely nothing now. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a very difficult forecast to make. I reckon Perth will get a spot or two of rainfall in the next 10 days. I don't reckon it's going to be 50 to 80 millimetres, but, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see, really. A lot of rainfall over the interior, of course, as I've been saying for the last couple of minutes. Uh, it's definitely going to be quite a wet week over there. But, yeah, that basically does it for this Australian weather update. Thank you so much for your company this morning. It's been great presenting the weather over the past month or two, and I really do want to continue this channel. So if you could show me some support by leaving a like, I can also subscribe to the channel, that would be much appreciated. I'd like to give a special shout out to the names on screen with a beautiful photo of Bluff Knoll taken on July 26, 2023. Let me tell you, that was one of the coldest experiences of my life. Winds of around 80 kilometers an hour. Uh, that was freezing that morning. I, I reckon the wind chill would have been down to around minus 12. It was bitterly cold. And I made the mistake of rushing up Bluff Knoll. I did it in 45 minutes and 18 seconds. So uh, it was bloody fast. And I had to wait about 40 minutes until the sun would actually rise. But when you're looking at a photo like this, well worth the shot. So if you're in Western Australia, especially down st south, check out the Stirling Ranges. I've uh, climbed them a couple of times and I do highly recommend them. But anyways, that is all for me. And I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.